Hello everybody, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. It is time for another Make It Monday. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. I've been making cards with Stamping Up for many, many years. I've been a demonstrator for 10 years. And my goal is to simply share joy one card at a time or spread joy one card at a time. And tonight I am gonna share with you a happy little mistake I made when I was ordering some things recently. Um, and I decided to challenge myself. I ended up with a stamp set that I didn't intend to order necessarily, but um, ended up with that and decided I am gonna challenge myself as we work through this today. So that is what is going to happen. And I'm actually pretty pleased with how things turned out here. Um, I'm just checking real quick to make sure I am on my correct Facebook page so that yep there i am get the volume turned off yay all right so i hope everybody had a great weekend if you've got family to celebrate father's day with that you were able to do that um, i always find it just a little bit hard this time of year because i don't have a father to celebrate with anymore at least in person um, but i was able to celebrate both my husband and my son as fathers and so that's kind of a special thing as well too um, let's see what else we are entering a very hot period of time here in Minnesota. We're expected to be in the nineties. Um, I can introduce you to Miss Zelda here. I'm hoping that she doesn't join us too much for cards tonight. Um, Zelda has been with us for about a week and is settling in pretty good, but is definitely a young kitten. Um, Let's see what else. I don't really have much more to report than that. It's just been kind of a busy week trying to finish up projects and things like that around the house. We're getting a little bit closer to a couple things, so that's good news. And um, other than that, let's get started making our cards here, guys. All right, I'm gonna toss the kitten down. Yep, you go play. And switch my camera around here, just a moment. I'm not sure I understand. Whoops, and there would be my watch talking to us. All right. Hey, that's not a bad job lining things up, is it? I'm just plugging my cord in because I always, even though my phone is charged, I've always got this fear of uh, running out of juice in my phone, and then I'm going to have things shut down halfway through one of my live videos here. So I've got that set up. I'm going to get rid of my little camera stand that I use and shine a little more light onto here. So anyhow, I was placing an order the other day and I thought, geez, it's a little more expensive, but I didn't take time to look to see that I got what I wanted. And um, I did, I missed out on a designer paper that I wanted just by mistake. Um, and I, like I said, I didn't go back and check. So what I did do was, um, order a whole suite of products actually fortunately it was on my wish list it just wasn't quite on my wish list for right now I'm trying to spread things out but I just rearranged some plans what I ended up with is this bright and beautiful sweet collection and I'm really glad that I did because I had a lot of fun um, creating a card I didn't really look at anybody else's cards because I didn't want to have that sitting in the back of my mind, but I knew I wanted to use the designer paper. I knew I wanted to use some of the stamps. I knew I wanted to use some of the dies and um, I accomplished that goal. So in this particular suite, it comes with designer series paper, this um, window sheet material that's got either gold or silver on it. Um, and then the stamp set and the coordinating dies. And so that is what I'm working with. And then I also added to this, um, I should add, this is on page 14 and 15 of the annual catalog. And then back on page 140, I also added some of the Tinsel Gems four pack. Um, I was able to use three of these colors on this card. And I want to show this to you now because one of the things um, that I really like about this suite of products is the designer paper. And the reason for that is it brings in so many of our new colors that we've added. And so that's just kind of exciting. And I'm gonna show all of those to you in just a moment here. But I've got this, hi Julie, hi Lynn. 
And I think I saw Roz there earlier too. So hello to you guys. Um, I've got this beautiful balloons stamp set. It is photopolymer. Um, fairly big balloons, but there's some small ones as well. Um, a little thing of, what is it, cray paper roll. And then a bunch of different greetings. Um, what I think is cool about this set is I think it's time for a celebration. Is it a birthday? Is it a you did it? So happy for you. Yay you. Let's get the celebration on. And that rounds real nicely with the balloons. Um, so I went ahead and I did stamp these images so that you could see them. Um, so I think, again, some just really fun stamps and the versatility of the celebrations on this is pretty cool. Um, this particular color, in case you're wondering, is Moody Mauve. That's one of the new colors, um, new in colors. So there you go with that. Then um, let me show you real quick these window sheets. And I've got a piece of white cardstock to put behind it just because I want you to be able to see it. Um, we've got this piece, which we'd be able to cut in half and use as card fronts. Like I said, one side of this is gold and then the other side is silver. Kind of reminds me of a Girl Scout song. If any of you were Girl Scouts, you might remember that. Um, and then there's a sheet that's got just confetti all over it. And that too is gold or silver. So you can flip it over and get the color that you want. And then one that's just got these dots all over it. Again, gold on one side. Flip it over and you've got silver on the other side. Um, when I saw this card and these dies, there's one die in particular. And it would be this one, which is three balloons. Or even this large balloon where I'm envisioning a window card. Um, now, I just got this mistake delivered to me on Saturday. So I didn't have a lot of time to play with it between when I got it and going live tonight. But I am going to try a window. And the reason I'm going to try that and why it comes to mind is one of these die cuts right here has just some confetti and stars and stuff on it. And what it does is it just cuts an opening into the card like this. And so you end up with all of these little pieces that will make great confetti for the inside of a window card. So it kind of is just all inclusive with all of that stuff. So keep that in mind as you're die cutting these pieces out. Um, don't throw away those little itty bitty pieces because you're going to be able to do some great things with that. All right. So then what I want to do is show you the designer series paper. And again, this is called Bright and Beautiful. And on each side, there's kind of a, a bold pattern. And so you can see all these wonderful colors. The colors that are included in this card stack are Pretty Peacock, Misty Moonlight. Um, oh, what color is this? Lost Lagoon. Lemon Lolly, which is one of the new yellow tones. This is uh, Fresh Freesia. This one is Bubble Bath. That's the kind of new pinkish purplish color. Blueberry Bushel, which is a returning color. Berry Burst, another returning color. Lemon Lime Twist, another returning color. I'm really glad. I love Granny Apple Green, but I'm glad to have a bright color back. And then I think this might be one of my favorite new colors is this blue. Is, it's called, I want to make sure I'm saying it right here, um, Azure Afternoon. And I just think this is really, really pretty color of blue. So lots of card stocks that go with it. The background is basic white. And again, you can see this sheet, I think, pulls in every color. How cool is that? If you did a card, you'd somehow be able to cut this in strips. And it wouldn't matter which color card base you used. Um, you could make a whole bunch of different cards just using this piece of designer paper. Then there's another piece with all of these triangles on there. And it kind of is an ombre effect. And then we've got these beautiful little bubbles, which would be um, probably fresh freesia and the bubble bath. And a little bit of um, 
uh, berry burst as well. And then we've got this sheet with these big bubbles in all the different colors. And then a sheet with, uh, I'm not sure, all these lines. I don't know that they're hash marks, but maybe you can be hash marks. Again, with all the different colors. You've got these fun circles in the lemon lime twist. These little squiggly waves, which again, if you did strips, you'd have just about every color. Um, these blue stars that kind of go with the ombre effect. So this one you could probably, this would make a fun 4th of July card if you use real red card stock behind it. Um, you could have kind of a pretty fun red, white, and blue card to do a 4th of July celebration if that's what you like to do. And then we've got this one with just confetti and it kind of goes into the blue, pinkish, purplish tones. All over star pattern, again, it picks up every color in the... Um, all of the colors are represented in this design along with this stripe pattern. And I think this would make a really fun balloon if you were to die cut this and wanted to get all the colors. Um, this one would too if you did that large pattern. And I bet the dots might get cut off, but you could even do that pattern with the, the balloon die cuts and have some pretty cool looking balloons. And then last but not least, we've got this berry burst line pattern that again sort of does the ombre effect. And of course, with all these beautiful papers, we have a second side. So we've got Lemon Lolly Stars, picks up the yellow tones. Um, this I think is probably more of a fresh freesia look, just a solid pattern. Um, I would call this one the bubble, bubble bath. I always wanna say pink bubble gum, I don't know why. Bubble bath for that one. And again, we've got stripes just with lemon lolly. That kind of looks like it could be a fun umbrella or beach scene, um, like a cover to a, a beach hut or something like that. Pretty peacock, again, kind of doing the ombre effect. Um, this one I would probably call Lost Lagoon. This one I would use Misty Moonlight, um, the azure blue. This really looks like water. I'm thinking one of the beach stamp sets might be kind of fun with this. I'll have to do some work with that. And then here we've got one that's kind of the berry burst color tones. And this would be the um, probably more misty moonlight again in the shades there. Lemon lime twist and another berry burst. So lots of just good basic patterns for making cards. Again, they go with such a variety of card stocks and things like that. But let me jump in now to the card we're gonna make today. This is the card that I designed. Um, it's using the Azure Blue and Lemon Lime Twist. And we're actually gonna make the same card over again, but we're gonna use a couple different patterns just so that you can see how things work out. Um, here, here you can see the gemstones I talked about. I did put the balloons up on dimensionals with a piece of twine underneath them and then just tied them together to get the strings. And then um, the other thing that I did, which I haven't done in a little bit, is I added some mist. Um, oh, my brain is just dying on me right here when I'm trying to think of the name. Wink of Stella to add a little bit of sparkle to my cards. Okay. So let me show you real quick measurements and then we'll get started on this. Um, to start with, I've got a card using five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I have a second piece that is four by, excuse me, five and a, yeah, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. This piece is four by five and a quarter. And then I've got a piece of basic white and here you can see where I did the um, die cuts. Somehow I've got some splatters on this card. I'm not sure how, but I'm going to leave them. And that's just going to be the way that it is. I may do a little bit of splatter to help cover some of that up, but um, we'll see. Maybe I'll make that the whole background. But you can see what I mean on how that just creates a little window. And again, then you've got all those pieces of confetti. Then I've got a piece of cardstock that measures one inch by five inches and then three quarters inch by five inches. And these you want to adjust. You can make bigger or smaller depending on the size of your sentiment. For me, I'm using the 
sentiment and that three quarter mark worked really well for that. Um, what I like about this design is I've got these two pieces of designer series paper and if they aren't quite even, don't quite match up, it's going to be covered anyhow with those strips. So here we've got designer series paper. This piece is um, two and a quarter by five and the second pattern that I'm using is um, one and a half by five inches. And then I just use basic white cardstock, stamped these balloon, balloon images and die cut them. And then I grabbed four random lengths of um, the white twine. And that is what we need to make our card. So to start with, I am going to take my basic white and I'm gonna stamp it with this sentiment. Um, and this is just the, I think it's time for a celebration. I'm not sure what I'm going to celebrate yet with this card, so I'm not going to put anything on the inside of my card. But when I'm ready to do that, I will be able to. I've got a Lemon Lime Twist ink pad here, so I'm just going to ink up my sentiment. Um, I do like to try to stamp my sentiments and other images first when I'm making cards. That way I am sure that everything is dry. And I'm not sure if I like how that looks, so good thing I have a second side of my paper. And I'm gonna just try it again. It's not bad, so I can use it, but if I can get one that I like a little better, I'm gonna use that side. Um, yeah, I think I like the placement of that one better. So I'll set my ink pad aside. All right, and then that can dry. And like I said, I already did these pieces. Um, and die cut them so I don't need to worry about stamping those. Now all we need to do is assemble our card. So to start with I've got this layer and I'm going to put this piece on top and I will grab my seal and remember when you're using this a gentle touch with the check mark that kind of keeps it from getting all gummed up. And then I'm just going to lay this on top of this paper and I want to have an even border on the sides and the top. I'm not so concerned about the bottom because obviously there's a bigger gap. So I've got that lined up and then I'm going to repeat that with this piece. And because this kind of reminds me of waves, I'm going to make sure that I put it up the correct way, what I think is the correct way on the card. And I want to make sure again that I've got that even border. I don't care if it overlaps a little bit here. I'm more concerned that my borders are the same. And so I can just adjust this so that it matches. And um, if this isn't quite lined up here, it doesn't matter. And that's because I'm going to take this piece. Gosh, I like this blue. All right, and we're just going to line it up. And if you want more or less of one of your patterns to show, you can just raise or lower this. You just want to be able to cover that seam. Um, I kind of like the bubbles probably a little better than the wave, so I do want to have more of that showing. And then I'm going to take my seal and adhere the sentiment. And I'm just centering, lining the ends up and then centering this top to bottom. And that essentially takes care of this piece. So we'll come in here and I'm going to fold on the score line. And remember when you, you've created a score, you kind of get a valley and a, a mountain or a bump. You always want to fold that bump to the inside um, when you're able to. Uh, it just gives a tends to give you a flatter, um, sharper crease when you do that. All right, and then we're going to layer this card on, or this layer on top. And I'm just using my seal to do that. Make sure I've got it opening the right way. And this card's kind of pretty enough. You could almost just leave it like this and maybe add some bling in this section, but we're not going to do that. 
um, we are going to open everything up. And I am going to use dimensionals. I just had them because I used them right before I went live. Where did they go? Where did they go? There they are. Found them. I don't know how I can lose stuff so quickly. And I'm going to put two of these onto each balloon. Um, the reason for that is the top one is primarily the one I'm using to adhere the balloon to the cardstock. And then the bottom one is the, the sticky piece I am using to adhere the balloon strings to. So I'm just going to peel all the backs off. I don't know if you can hear, I've got both kittens down here and they are running around and kicking an old plastic tablecloth around. So all I did for the strings um, is just adhere them. And I did it kind of in a way that the strings would be held down so that they'd come out at the base of the balloon as much as possible. The dimensionals are sticky. So I'm just doing that and then I just kind of randomly place these balloons up here um, not in any particular order or anything what I did want to make sure is that all of the strings kind of lie underneath the balloons so they aren't hanging over and then to tie this knot I just grabbed all four strings that were left and tucked them through and made a quick knot in them. And I am going to cut these off real quick. And these, I don't care if they hang below the card because they're gonna tuck up real easily when I put this in a card. And then let's grab the Wink of Stella and add just a little shine to the balloons here. Um, you could even go off to one side and just create the shadowing effect. I'm actually painting over all of the balloon because they're sparkly balloons today. I like Wink of Stella because it just adds a little bit of sparkle without the mess of some of the glitter and can add just a little bit of pop to your card. Oops, that would be a kitten that just knocked over some of Sarah's classroom school supplies in the background there. Sorry about that. No problem. We'll just dump, jump up to a higher bin and see what we can knock over, they say. Um, and then I'm going to add three of these um, tinsel gems to the card. So I've got my take your pick tool and I'm just going to randomly place three of them on. You know what? I don't want that yellow right next to there. We'll put that one down here and I'm going to grab one of those pink ones and put that up there. It just adds a little bit of pop. That's all. Now, if you remember, I said I was thinking about how I was going to handle the splatters that somehow, I'm not sure how they got on here. And I am going to grab a piece of scratch paper here. And then I'm also going to take one of my brushes. Um, 
I just had to remember where I had them in my new layout here, but I got it figured out. So I'm just going to take one of these brushes and then I'm going to grab, um, oh, just a variety of color. I'll use my lemon lime and the berry burst. And, oh, I think I'll grab a little bit of the azure afternoon. And I've squished the ink pad a little bit to get some in the lid here. And I'm just going to squeeze some of this water down through my brush just so that there's a little bit in there. I'm going to grab some of the color from my tray here. Squeeze down just a titch more water. Um, tap it off a little bit. And then I'm just going to come through. I find it easier to hit it against my finger. And I just want to get a little bit more color. on here. We'll leave it at that. I don't want a lot because I still want whatever sentiment I push in there, put in there to show. And I'm just going to brush the color out of here. And then I'll grab a little bit of my berry burst doing the same thing. So just a little bit of water, some ink, and we will Splatter. So this kind of carries the party theme to the inside of the card just a little bit. And then I'm going to put in some of my lemon lime as well. I probably should have started with the lighter color just in case I had anything left on my brush. It just would have been a little easier jumping between colors, but that washed out well enough. And... Squeeze some water down from here, and again, I'll just pick up a little bit of color, and I'm going to tap against my finger, and, and we'll splatter some of this Lemon Lime Twist color to the inside of the card. So you can see I've added some color. I've covered up the splatters that I didn't intend to have on there originally, and I've created a slightly festive inside of my card too. Loki, leave the kitty alone. And I always will clean up my brushes when I've done colors with them so that next time I do it, they're ready to go. And we're good with that. This will take just a minute to dry. Normally I would if I had planned to do this, I would have recommended that you do it at the beginning. And the reason for that is it will take just a moment or two for this to dry. Um, I'm just going to put it on my paper and kind of rub it off so that when I add my adhesive and put it in my card, I don't get it all over the inside. All right. And then we're just going to take this and adhere it to the inside of the card. Now this card does open this way, so you can either put your confetti at the bottom or at the top. I'm choosing to put it at the bottom because it's still falling from the sky. And what's at the bottom is what has already piled up. And there you go. You've got a completed card. So it's a fairly quick and easy card. Um, I just used opposite papers as I was uh, creating and made my little strings, added some bling, and then used the die cuts primarily to enhance the inside of this card. Now on this one, I did use this long die that comes with the set, and it just cuts these slits in there. I have a feeling, I didn't check first, but if you're really patient, you'd be able to thread ribbon through here and come up with a pretty cool border. Um, again, I didn't try that and I'm not sure if I'm that patient but let's we can give it a try if you want and we'll just see what happens I think that's going to work pretty well so it's a long die it's more than um, the five and a half inches on a card 
So it's going to work really well um, as an edge die. And I think when you guys watch my videos, you get a real insight to how my brain starts working when I'm doing things and I start thinking of other things. So it's like, oh, we got to try this. Ooh, we got to try that. Um, that's a lot of times how I do things. Not just when I'm making my cards either. All right, so we'll run this through. The little machine. So you can see it just, it creates these openings. And I'm certainly not going to weave it through everything there. So don't, uh, don't panic if you think that that's what I'm going to do tonight. Um, and what I need to do is I'm just going to grab a piece of ribbon. I think that's one thing I haven't completely unpacked yet. Um, okay. I'm still working on that unpacking thing. But let me grab a piece of... I mean, normally I can't get them to stay taped shut and they fall apart when I am have them piled up in my bin. But here's what I'm thinking you could do is, you know, you could even do every two slits or create a pattern and just weave ribbon through like that and come up with some pretty neat designs for your cards too. So like I said I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time to get this finished but maybe if I could create a little pattern here going two one two one um, so you can get a feel for what it might look like if you created a pattern like that weaving you could have the ribbon show and make that part of your focal point or if you did um, some of the narrow ribbons maybe you could do a little bit of weaving or something too with that looks kind of cool from the back side as well so just something to think about with that particular die cut. Again, here are the two cards I've made with the beautiful balloons. I think it's time for celebration and I'm gonna be able to put some kind of sentiment inside once I know what I'm celebrating. I really like how that speckled look turned out on that card, even though again, it wasn't a planned piece. And I hope you all enjoyed making this card and it's inspired you to create a card and share it with someone you know, spreading your joy one card at a time as well. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.